Hello and welcome to another tutorial. We are looking at the operators in Java and now we're going to look at the equality and relational operators. And these are binary operators, which means uh, they need, uh, they require two operands. And uh, as we mentioned before, for the mathematical operators, when instead of having a literal, you have some sort of expression uh, on either side. So the expressions uh, get evaluated first. The key is also the order of expression and Java guarantees that uh, the, the, the order of exp uh, evaluation of the two expressions, the left operand and right operand is first the left operand of a binary operator is going to be evaluated and then uh, the right operand and then both the results are put into the binary operator and the final result is calculated. Why is this important? Because sometimes the evaluation of the left or one of the expressions on either left or right might have side effect that could affect the other side for example and we saw this with the with the unary operators especially the plus plus uh, minus minus we saw that how confusing it could be if we have for example uh, uh, something like minus minus x2 plus x2 because it's such a postfix or prefix operators these have side effects and I'm using a uh, binary operator which is plus but then uh, the left hand side gets evaluated first and then uh, uh, it changes the x2 but x2 is already used on the right hand side so the evaluation of the left hand side has side effect on the right hand side and we could also check what happens is if we switch the uh, uh, these so uh, I could say uh, x2 plus minus minus x2 and this is x4 and then let's see what the result could be x4 uh, let's run this so we are running uh, test 3 all right and we're getting 9 and the reason is that when you have a binary operator in java the left side is going to evaluate it first so we know that uh, we have this uh, something on the left will we get, uh, get will get evaluated and something on the right for the plus operator which is a binary operator uh, the left hand side is um, 6 at the moment right or actually it's 5 because when we hit this line of code x2 is already 5 so let's say x2 is 5 and then uh, um, actually we can print it to be sure so sys out x2 at this line before we hit this uh, line we want to see what the value of x2 is uh, x2 is 5 all right so we have five so when we have binary operator the, the expression on the left or the left hand side will get e evaluated first and the return value of that evaluation will put and uh, will be considered the left hand operand of the plus but then the right hand is minus minus x2 so this expression changes the value of x2 to 4 and the return value of this expression is also 4 because this is a, a prefix so we get 9 right after this line of code gets executed, x2 is already uh, 4. But then uh, uh, you see when we did this, um, here uh, basically uh, x2 was 6 and then uh, uh, we first decremented and then uh, 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 the return value of this expression is basically the, the updated value or the new value. So be very careful when you're doing binary operators and you put expressions on the left and right. The left hand side will get evaluated first and uh, let's also create a new class and uh, let's create a new class binary operators. And uh, what I'm going to try to show you the order of evaluation of a binary operator, we can uh, actually prove that by looking at the expressions, putting uh, method calls or function calls to the left and right. So I'm going to create a, a static method here, test one, public a static a static void test one. And I'm going to have uh, two methods. Uh, so public a static, uh, Let's, uh, let's say this one returns uh, or um, let's say this one returns int uh, uh, method one and we're going to print a message to saying that this method was called sysout method one and then we're going to return one and we're going to do the same have another method for example uh, method two and then return two 
all right and then in the test one i'm going to test the plus operator which is a binary operator i want to see what happens if i have int x3 is um, or x1 is uh, method one plus method two and the types of are, are compatible and then uh, let's uh, do a sys out on x1 or um, yeah let's keep this now the question is uh, when we have this binary operator plus whether the left hand side gets evaluated first or the right hand side and we see that method one is called and method two is called so it means that the left hand side is going to be evaluated first and then right hand side uh, know that this is not random java definitely guarantees this order so java doesn't really uh, leave anything to chance or randomness sometimes for example in c++ uh, some things uh, are left or unspecified but now in java everything is specified so you have a clear understanding no matter how many times i run this the left hand side will be uh, uh, called first and we can prove this by changing the order method to method one So method two first called and then method one and then the return value of each uh, call is plugged into the binary operator and the final result is calculated. Why is this important? Because in, in Java everything is in the scope of class. So if I have a public, a static or maybe let's make it private. If I have a, a field that can basically if any of these method calls can have a side effect and I know that this method two is going to be evaluated first and this might change or have a side effect on the right hand side expression and you have to be very careful when trying to do this kind of complexing private static uh, int um, uh, number is 10 right and here obviously uh, so in any of these we're going to say number plus plus note that uh, uh, pl number plus plus is pretty much equivalent to plus plus number we discussed the nuance the nuances or the very small difference between these two and we said that plus plus number is slightly more efficient when we don't care about the return value of the expression so um, and then we're going to say minus minus number so why is this important because uh, in one method call method one method two and uh, note that uh, what happens when we print number so this is uh, first we say method one plus method two and then uh, we then we say method two plus method one now obviously if i don't want to so let's run this first so number is 10 because method one increases that and then method two is decreases that so if we say method two and method one it is still 10 because we're doing a symmetric thing but let's say here we say number uh, plus equal to and then uh, we just say uh, number minus one something that is not a symmetric operation then if i say method one plus method two the problem is that i know that these calls have a side effect on the global variable number and uh, the fact that the order is matters for this binary operators right for this plus operator first the left hand side is evaluated and this has a side effect on the right hand side because they're coupled to each other through this global variable number so let's run these so number comes out 11 what happens if i say method 2 plus method 1 and again now the method 2 is called first and it's still 11 right so um we increase uh, two and then uh, we reduce uh, by one it's 11 so uh, although it's not uh, symmetric um, we still have uh, some sort of uh, symmetry at the final result right uh, because let's say instead of having number minus one let's say my uh, uh, multiply equals three for example right and then uh, uh, if we say method one method two we end up with 36 because uh, we increase by 2 12 and then multiply by 3 if we say method two plus method one uh, we end up with 32 so now the operation is such a way that uh, um, uh, the side effect of the evaluating the left hand side first uh, causes a different result so be very careful when you're doing with binary operators in such a way that the uh, evaluation of the left hand side first 
effects or has a side effect on the right hand side so this is a very subtle detail that you have to be careful about same with these binary operators uh, equal equal and uh, not equal less than or, or greater than greater than or equal less than less than equal usually especially in for loops we use the less than to terminate a for loop um, but in some cases it's also easier to use greater than or equal or less than or equal now the thing here is that we already saw that in the past uh, lectures that in the bytecode actually we don't have two different bytecodes for less than or greater than they translate into um, uh, into uh, other uh, into only one bytecode so and then in the bytecode the branch prediction is just different right so let's say uh, uh, logical operators I'm going to create a new class and uh, let's have a, a, a method test one public static void test one and we're going to check the uh, uh, relational operators right or logical operators and the first one is uh, a equality so the equality operator int x1 is 5 x2 is uh, or let's put them on different lines int x2 is 10 and then uh, uh, var x3 is x1 equal equal x2 and we know that this has to uh, any logical operator which is a binary operator it's going to uh, ret the return value of this operator binary operator is a boolean so this type has to be a boolean right i cannot uh, the question is can i put int here no because this return that cannot convert from boolean to int so the return value of any logical operator is a boolean in java now in c plus for example obviously bool can be converted to int and int can be converted to bool because bool is is just zero or non-zero the only thing that true and false doesn't have a uh, sense in Java in terms of uh, the, uh, it doesn't have the same uh, meaning in C++ in C++ if something is zero which means it has some type and all the bits of that type at that memory location is zero then it's false anything not other than that it's true right but in Java they try to be more specific about true and false uh, uh, and which is uh, in generally it's a good case or it's a good thing so let's look at the bytecode uh, logical operators let's open with class file viewer I'm going to actually uh, put it side by side and we are going to go full screen here so in test one uh, we are looking at the uh, uh, equality operator this is the logical equality we you already know how this goes first the literals are going to push to the stack so we load a literal 5 i const which means an integer constant 5 and we put it in the index 0 i store which, which means a store a pointer or a reference to an integer at index 0 of the stack why index 0 not index 1 because this is a static method so uh, the, the the pointer this is not uh, passed uh, or in the X stack of jvm right for this thread we know that if you have a non-static method in a class the first argument or the first variable is always a reference or this reference to this object right and then we push the integer 10 and then uh, um, we store it in location 1 which is this variable x2 and then uh, we're going to evaluate this again assignment operator the right hand side is evaluated first and then the re return value is uh, assigned to left hand side and uh, so in order to evaluate this we have to load x1 x2 first that's why i load it means load an integer at index 0 on the stack which is x1 and then uh, load integer uh, on stack x2 and know that again in order to evaluate this binary operator in java the left hand side has to be evaluated first that's why x1 will be always loaded in the in the memory right i load 0 x1 and x2 and then if integer compare not equal so what this does it says that uh, this equality is actually translates into uh, basically the branch prediction or the branch is uh, if not equal just jump to 14 jump to 14 it returns 0 right else uh, return 1 else uh, return uh, it returns 1 and go to 15 which is puts it in a 
2, right? So this line of code x1 equals equals x2 and then assign it to x3. Um, basically, this equality translates into if integer compare not equal. So it's actually che checks for not equal. And if it's not equal, uh, it loads zero. So as you can see um, in the bytecode, in the bytecode, uh, Boolean doesn't exist. Boolean does not exist, right? There is not, no such thing as Boolean type in the bytecode. It's just int. Why int? Why not only one byte? We know that in C++, bool is one byte. The reason here is that uh, the stack is 32 bits. So there is no performance difference in uh, pushing or pushing one uh, an 8 bit uh, integer to the stack or a 30, 32 bit integer and uh, these days we don't care about memory that much so they just push integer 0 and 1 so 32 bit integer right so the bool actually uh, kind of uh, uh, takes 32 bit and then uh, in the bytecode, right? In the bytecode, bool, boolean type, uh, instead of one byte, it's uh, actually uh, zero or one. And know that uh, zero and one is exactly i, which means it's just integer, 32 bit. i means 32 bit. There is no such thing as an eight bit uh, integer. We don't have a, uh, we don't have a bytecode for the, that. And I can prove it to you by looking at other types. So we can say byte, uh, a1 is 5, short A2 is 5, um, and then uh, byte short int A3 is 5, and long uh, A4 is 5. Now, if you look at the, uh, let's also actually put this in another method. Let's call this test 2. What we're going to see is that uh, actually all of these. Uh, it's very interesting to look at this, how it happens. So byte short int, these are all 32 bit and they fit in a stack. So my prediction is that these all translate into I const five, which means they all translate in a 32 bit integer, not a, uh, for example, um, um, let's see, not for example, a eight bit or a short, which is a two byte int is four byte. So test two, so I const five, I store uh, zero, I const five, I store. And again, note that all of these are, it says store an integer, I, integer 32 bit. So where is this uh, concept of saying that, okay, this variable occupies uh, one byte or eight bit. Whereas in the bytecode, we always see it's just integer, right? So it's all, all of these bytes short, in, these all translate into 32 bit integer. And uh, that's, that's one of the things that uh, causes um, basically that the fact that Java uh, consumes more memory because in the bytecode, it's just integer 32 bit. So these types mainly uh, are used for the runtime safety or basically compile time type safety. But as you can see in the bytecode, um, they all translate into uh, integer. What about the last one, long? We know that this is 64 bit integer. So how, how is it handled in uh, bytecode? And we know that the way this works is um, we're going to load a wide integer. A wide integer means 60, uh, 64 bit integer. So load, uh, 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 load const to uh, wide. I guess what this means is that you have to push two things to the stack. So it first loads the uh, the higher 32-bit one and then the lower 32-bit. And then so it says long 5. So it has a, for longs, we have a special bytecode. For byte short int, we have exactly the same bytecode, which is surprising, right? Why is it that? all of these translate into the same bytecode that doesn't make sense Are, shouldn't they be different and the answer is no i mean they decided to just say that okay memory is cheap uh, we just go with the uh, integer um, 32 bit for all of these that's because there is no performance difference between pushing a 16 bit integer to in a 32 bit stack remember the stack of the java virtual machine is 32 bit so each bytecode 
can push 32 bit or 16 bit or 8 bit to the stack and all of them will have the same performance there is no performance difference that's why all these lines by short in they will translate internally into a 32 bit integer for uh, 64 bit uh, we have a different uh, syntax right so um, that's that's the way this works right and now uh, what I would like to do let's look at the um, let's look at the other operators so equality translates into uh, if not equal so let's bring back that uh, bytecode so this translates into uh, if integer compare if we are doing comparing uh, integers if I compare not equal right so this is for comparing uh, uh, equals and we said that again boolean uh, the return value is boolean boolean uh, is just integer 0 and 1 in the bytecode 32 bit there is no such thing as an as a one byte uh, boolean in the bytecode it translates into 32 bit um, now the next one is uh, uh, what we want to see is uh, where is that not equal so equality translates into if integer compare and we can uh, also look at other things for example boolean x4 is um, uh, 10.5 equals 7.7 uh, .7. so this is for a uh, floating point so uh, i'm going to write it here integer equality and then a floating point or double floating point equality let's see what it translates to so in the test one um, if integer compare and then uh, where is this uh, so test one let's save this and uh, it's going to probably uh, recompile and then uh, or maybe let me just close this and open it up again logical operators class for viewer okay and then uh, let's see so x3 is where we evaluate uh, uh, this and then uh, x4 and note that what happened here is uh, this is uh, comparing uh, literals and the, the compiler realized that and it optimized away so if you do this is so the java c which is a dumb compiler it actually evaluated this uh, logical expression at compile time which means it realizes that 10.5 is never equal or equal to 2.7.7 .7, so it already uh, replaced this line with just a constant zero integer zero and it's pushing that to the um, to the stack but that's not what we want let's say uh, double uh, uh, x double a1 equals 7.7 .7. And then uh, we compare the literal with the uh, uh, with the with the compare the literal with the variable. And in this case, Java C is dumb enough to uh, not realize that uh, not realize that uh, a one is still a has wasn't changed right up to after a one was declared until we get to this expression. A one wasn't changed, so. Um, the compiler should have been able to optimize this away but is this true no as you can see if integer compare not equal is for x3 after that we have to load a constant wide constant which is double remember double is also 64 bit so we have to use a special um a special bytecode for wide uh, literals or wide constants anything wide means it doesn't fit into 132 bit position of the stack of JVM it has to go through two uh, that's why we say load constant two wide it's a wide constant you have to do two operations to load it into the stack and double a store means uh, so we load this 7.7 .7, which is a wide uh, number 64 bit we double a store d a store means double variable double primitive stored in a1 and then uh, we're going to LDC means uh, load this constant 10.5 that's for evaluating this remember the left hand side of the equality sign of the logical operator any binary operator in Java the left hand side will be evaluated first right and then uh, 
uh, we're going to deload 3 which is a after loading this constant we load the value of a1 d compare so the the bytecode here is uh, now what's interesting uh, uh, these lines of code and so after loading a1 these lines of bytecode translate into the evaluation of uh, uh, this uh, floating point operation so let me comment this out and we go through this all right what are we doing uh, d compare double compare uh, and then l and then if not equal go to line 32 which means uh, uh, zero right obviously if not equal we have to return a false a boolean which has the value of false and then uh, false just means zero integer zero right and then uh, uh, otherwise we return one so this equality now translates into two byte codes double comparison comparing two doubles and then uh, if not equal we go to 32 uh, we load zero otherwise load three and the way this works is that uh, it uses it just compares the bits the floating points or the 64 bits that represent this and that's a very bad idea you should never do that you should over compare to uh, floating point uh, uh, floating point numbers using the utility utility methods in the uh, wrapper classes for example i can say uh, a boolean x5 equals double dot um, uh, uh, basically equal compare so there's a static method compare that compares two double values and I can say 10.5 and uh, a1 right now this returns a uh, int and the reason is that it's, it either returns minus one or e, uh, zero or one, right? So this uh, basically is the same as the comparator interface, which has the compare to method, right? So you can directly assign it to a bool, but then um, uh, uh, you can uh, basically assign it to an int, for example, all right? So again, uh, floating point comparison, you should never use this to accurately compare floating point numbers. Now you can use the less than or equal uh, or basically less than or greater than operators with floating point numbers. That's a valid thing, but exact equality between two floating point numbers is not a good idea. For integer types, byte short in line, you can definitely do exact comparison for floating point numbers because their accuracy is always limited it's not infinite accuracy that's why um, it's not recommended to use this exact equality now one thing that I want to point out is that uh, now we saw that if instead of uh, defining a1 I put the literal here the compiler optimizes this and in the past I said that um, the compiler is still can recognize this kind of optimizations if you declare your local variable as finite as soon as I do this, uh, note that what happens, uh, basically, uh, where do, so where do we load A1? As soon as we uh, execute this line of code, which means we push 7 to 7 to A1, then the next is we just load a 0, and the 0 is the result of this comparison. So the Java compiler automatically evaluated this expression, even though A1 is not a literal. And the reason is final, right? Again, the reason I repeat this in my lectures is because this is very important to recognize that there are subtle performance optimizations that you can easily do by just adhering to the uh, basically the best practices of programming. In Java, you have to you can use final because if you are just uh, extracting this literal so that it's easier, you give it a meaningful name. Let's say it's some good number. So that if let's say your method gets very long and that's another thing about best practices, your methods should be as short as possible, as few lines as possible. If you see that you're writing a method that it gets more than 20 lines, maybe it's better for you to break it down in multiple methods, right? 
and then define any local variables as, as final if you know that you're not going to change it down the road in the method because any local variable that is assigned to a literal and is final then uh, the compiler can optimize it away in the expressions that you use it to evaluate and that's that could save a lot of time especially if you're dealing with 64-bit integers or 64-bit floating points because they have a special bytecodes and every time the java has to load a 64-bit integer or floating point to the stack it takes two operations so it's not as efficient as 32-bit uh, calculations so be very careful about this right um, so this was the brief introduction to the logical operators and in the next lecture we're going to uh, look more into these. I hope you enjoyed this. Please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.